We had 10 visitors. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. I want to say that God was in the place. Um, you can open up your Bibles. We're going to be reading, amen, Luke 5, 1 through 8. And so seizing opportunities. Praise the Lord. And so in his autobiography, amen, just as I am, Billy Graham tells about a conversation he had with John F. Kennedy shortly after his election. And so on the way back to the Kennedy house, the president-elect stopped the car and turned to me. Do you believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ, he asked. I most certainly do. Well, does my church believe it? They have it in their creed. They don't preach it, he said. They don't tell us much about it. I'd like to know what you think. I explain what the Bible says about Christ coming the first time, dying on the cross, rising from the dead, and then the promise that he would come back again. Only then I said, are we going to have a permanent world peace? Amen. And so it's very interesting, he said, looking away. We'll, amen, have to talk more about it someday. And then he drove on. And so several years later, the two met again in 1963 in a national prayer breakfast. Billy Graham says that he had the flu. And so I gave my sh short talk. And so he gave his, amen, and so we walked out of the hotel to his car together. And as always our custom, at the curb, amen, he turned to me. Billy, could you ride back to the White House with me? I'd like to see you for a minute. Mr. President, I've got a fever. I prosted, protested. Not only am I weak, but I don't know, amen, I don't want to give you this thing. Could we wait till later and we can talk some other time? And so it was cold, snowy that day, and I was freezing as I stood there without my overcoat. Of course, he said graciously, but the two would never meet again. Later that year, Kennedy was shot dead. And so Graham comments, amen, his hesitation at the car door and his request haunt him till this day. And so what was on his mind, should I have gone with him? And so it was an irreversible moment. And so Billy Graham had the opportunity to minister to the president. And so because he missed that open door, he was always left with a what if. And I want to say this evening that we as Christians, amen, have many opportunities Amen. To minister to people. Let's read our scripture. Luke 5, 1 through 8 says this. So as the crowds was pressing into Jesus to hear God's word, he was standing by the lake. He saw the two boats at the edge of the lake, and the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. He got into the boat, which belonged to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the land. Then he sat down and was teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Master, Simon replied, We've worked all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they did this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets began to tear. So they, amen, signal to the other Amen. Partners in the other boats to come to help them. They came and filled the boats. Amen. So full they began to sink. And it says, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee. Amen. And said to go away from me because I am a sinful man, Lord. Let's pray this evening. God, we pray that you would move, Lord God. 
by your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you would speak to our hearts and in our lives, Lord God, that our, Lord God, lives matter, Lord God, that we would profess, Lord God, the gospel, Lord God, to all creation, Lord God, to all creatures, Lord God, that are out there, Lord God, that would receive your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you're willing, Lord God, and you're more than able to use our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to take a look firstly at everyday opportunities. And so we as believers have been commissioned, amen, with the witness of the gospel to others. Matthew 28, 19, go into all the world, amen. This is what our story is about. Jesus seizes an opportunity to declare the gospel. And so one day as Jesus was standing by the lake, amen, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. And so the people gathered, and Jesus moves on an opportunity. And so the same is true for you and I today. We have opportunities all around us, but we must be attentive to seeing them. And so Jesus responds. He saw, amen, the water's edge, two boats left there by the fishermen, amen. So they were washing their nets. He got into the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore, and then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And so Jesus' example is responding to what's going on around him by presenting kingdom truths. If we think about this, we all, amen, every day have the opportunity Amen. To witness to people. And so this is sometimes through other, amen, through groups. Think about this. We all have people at our jobs. In our neighborhoods, amen. There was a guy the other day. I was hanging out with Dale. And this guy just pulls up. He says, I've been meaning to talk to you, Dale. I see that you have, amen, that you do mechanic work. And so he stopped. He had trouble with his vehicle. And so he just pulled over, and we made a friend. Hallelujah. Amen. There's people at our schools, amen, that we can influence for God. Recreational leagues, amen, whatever it may be. Maybe your kids in baseball, soccer, football. And so we have the opportunity, amen, to witness, to tell people about Jesus Christ. And so it's sometimes through other opportunities. I know there in Colleen, they've, they've got the opportunity to go into the army base that's there. We go to parks sometimes. There's funerals, amen. There's healing crusades. There's child dedications, amen, like this morning. And so we got to share the gospel. I'll be very frank with you. This morning I felt a resistance in the church. But at the end I made a statement. And when, when I made the statement, the Holy Spirit fell. In this place. Amen. And so you and I, amen, were re amen, presented with that opportunity this morning. And thank God that we were. They heard the gospel, amen. The Holy Spirit was here and ministered to people. And so I want to say that we're planting seeds, amen, into these people's hearts. Amen. Sometimes it's through life events. I said this this morning. COVID. Things that are on people's minds. Special calendars, amen, or dates. Sometimes it is our own experience, amen, through healing. Every time, amen, I pray for somebody, I give the testimony that God has done a miracle in my own life. You've been delivered by the power of God also. Some of you have powerful background, amen, a powerful background, a testimony of what God has done in your life. And so the issue is that we miss 
amen, everyday opportunity. And so why do we miss, amen, these opportunities? A lot of times we're consumed with life. We're consumed with our own issues and our own schedules. Amen. And a lot of times, amen, we're just busy people. And so we ignore the opportunities that are before us. A lot of times, amen, we lose heart for souls, amen, if we're not engaged, amen, in kingdom business. And so we have no motivation to declare the gospel. Inexperience. A lot of us say, I, I lack, I can't, I don't know, or I'm intimidated to open up my mouth. But I want to say that Jesus in our story, he sets the example. He, you can preach anywhere. Think about this. He's on the shore. He's preaching on the shore. He's preaching from a boat. Amen. And so the, he's not in the church. He's not in a church setting. He's not in a synagogue. Amen. And, and Jesus Christ is seizing the opportunity. And so we need eyes for the harvest Eyes for opportunity. We must ask God for this. Amen. For, the, for a heart, amen, to work, amen, with people. For the desire of evangelism. And so when we have this, we will begin, amen, to create opportunities. And so this is what our evangelism is all about. And so we need to create platforms, amen, to present the gospel to people. We'll do anything, amen, to present the gospel. We'll show a movie outside. We'll do a concert at the park. We'll do a concert inside the church. A lot of times we don't put it on the flyer that it's a church to, to attract people, amen, to preach the gospel. And so we look for opportunities, amen, to extend God's kingdom. And so once we have an eye for opportunities, we need to think about our message. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And so we do, don't, amen, Amen. Know a lot of times what to say. But how many of us know that Jesus, amen, gives us examples in his word about what his kingdom is about? Things to do for God, amen. We can tell people that God, amen, can be in your life like God has been in my own life. We have experienced God, and so we can testify, amen, to that. And that God has also worked in our own personal needs. God has healed us, amen. We're able to live for God. We have our testimonies that we can share with other people. And so the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Our declaration needs, amen, to focus on Jesus and the gospel. And so how do we effectively, amen, minister the gospel? Amen, our testimony. And so Jesus, amen, what Jesus has done in you. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Whoever is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old, amen, has gone and the new is here. That's a testimony in itself. When people see the change, amen, in your life, that you're no longer living, amen, for the world. That you're no longer, amen, doing the things according to the way the world does them. That's a testimony. And so God's word, amen, is another. The Holy Ghost moves through the word of God. And so the people were crowded around him and listening to the word of God. Think about this. When you preach the word of God, when you testify, amen, it is God's spirit that gets involved. Hebrew 4, 12 says this. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Amen. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the joints 
and the marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And so God's word, amen, does what it intends to do. A lot of times we try to rationalize, well, how are people going to get saved? How is this going to work out, amen, and we don't get the Holy Spirit involved? God's spirit, amen, is more than able to do, amen, what it needs to do to save a soul. The gospel, amen, Christ incarnated, Christ crucified, and the resurrection. And so the confidence of this is that it's something that God does supernaturally. It's not based on you, but on what God is. And so that's why it works, amen. It works, amen, because we trust in God. If I were just here trusting in myself, amen, it would not work. But I put my trust in God. Mark 16, 20 says this. God worked with them. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And then the Lord worked, amen, with that and confirmed his words, his word by signs, amen, that accompanied it. And so it's amazing to me, amen, when I think about it through the years, who got saved, amen, and where they got saved. A park outreach. A haunted house. A bus station. While we're out street preaching, amen, people have gotten saved. And so we must take confidence in the gospel of Jesus. God does far more than we can, amen, do or even see. In 2 Kings 16, Elijah, amen, more is with us. Do not be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And so there's things, amen, that are happening in the supernatural. I want to say that it's supernatural to us, but it's natural to God. God is more than willing, amen. God is more than able, amen, to get involved when his people get involved. But a lot of times we have trouble, amen, with the supernatural. That's why sometimes, amen, people, they don't believe in healing, that God can heal them. But I want to say that we serve a God, amen, that's willing to work, amen, for us in the supernatural. He can do it like that. But a lot of times, it's, are we going to trust him? Are we going to believe, amen? And so seizing opportunities. Our story reveals the results of seizing everyday opportunities. And so there's conversion. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. And so this was a conversion moment. He had just heard all the teachings, and now he is converted, amen. And so this is a declaration, amen, of what God can do. The miraculous. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Think about this. Here is a miracle catch of fish. But it could be in the physical, amen, in physical healing. It could be in a supernatural deliverance. It could be in the unseen internal wounds, amen, healing. Think about this. When people come into this place and the gospel is preached, Sometimes they don't even raise their hands because they're, they're intimidated to come to an altar. But God is doing something in them supernaturally. Like I said, there was resistance. And once I made this statement, it's like the Holy Ghost came down. That resistance broke, amen. And there was something, I felt it this morning. God did something in the people that were present here.
And so God, amen, intends to direct, amen, us to the miraculous. I want to say miracles should be a normal part of our salvation. Mark 16, 17 says this. Then signs shall follow, and these signs will be accompanied those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. John 14, 12 says this. This is Jesus speaking. Greater works. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. They will do even greater things, amen, than these, because I am going to be with my Father. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Amen. Think about this. Jesus Christ said this about us. And so that's how much God is into doing, amen, his will or fulfilling his will upon earth. And so this can be, amen, the norm for Christian life. I want to say that God can use you. You look at the Bible, amen, in 2 Kings, and there's four lepers, amen, that are, that are healed. You look at Philip, amen, in the Ethiopian, the decoration of the gospel, and so there's a supernatural conversion. And so you see this in Peter's life also. After he denies Jesus Christ, amen, the Holy Spirit falls. He preaches, he declares the gospel, and so the miraculous takes place. People get saved, they get baptized, and they get filled with the Holy Ghost. Over 3,000 people are present. Amen. And God does a miracle of salvation. And so I want to say that this is something that God can still do in 2021. And so keeping the biblical pattern in 2021 is possible. We just need to stick to God's word. What could be the potential, amen, of your life through evangelism? I want to say that evangelism works, amen. God is more, amen, into saving souls than you and I are. And so when we get involved, amen, God also gets involved. Philippians 3.17 says this, amen. I want to say that the pattern words join together in the following, my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, amen, keep your eyes on those, amen, who lives as we do. And so, amen, the sermon that I preached was called Seizing the Opportunity, this quote, amen, Opportunity doesn't knock at the door, amen. She answers when you knock. Think about this. That we have to seek out for opportunity. Opportunity is not going to come to us. Opportunity does not knock on the door. She answers, amen, when, we, when you knock. Things happen, amen, when we're actively involved in God's kingdom. The supernatural happens. We prayed for Paul this morning. The gospel was preached. We laid hands on him. We prayed for him. He felt healed. And so we need to look, amen, for every opportunity that we can to preach the gospel. Amen. Can I have every head bowed and every eye closed this evening?